If you view your life as a uh, piece of fabric or a tapestry, the photography is the stitching. It keeps everything together. It, it gives me, you know, impetus to express myself, to communicate. I was not destined to be a photographer, you know, I was in school to be a writer until I was required to take this photography class and I borrowed my father's old camera. I just started making pictures with it and I think I thought two things. I think this, uh, this whole endeavor felt really natural and a good expression for my imagination. And secondarily, uh, I thought to myself, this could keep me out of an office. <laughs> I work really, really hard when I'm in the field. I figure things out. I'm not some textual, technical virtuoso who's kind of out there like, okay, well, give me God's light over here. And it ain't like that. There are pictures in my career that I have shot uh, that one frame required five days. I bought my first Nikon camera in 1973. My professor in school told me, he said, buy a knicker mat. It's a poor man's F2. Okay? And I was definitely a poor man at the time. So I scraped together some dough and I bought a knicker mat and a 50 millimeter lens. You grow up with a camera. You, it, it's almost like having uh, you know, uh, a childhood friend or something. I think without getting too crazy about it, it's a little bit of a part of your personality as well. These photographs represent you know, a departure for me, certainly the beginning of an adventure. It was my first major story for National Geographic. They sent me to Chihuahua in Mexico. There's a legendary train that runs from the coast into the interior called the Copper Canyon uh, train run. Very rugged terrain and just a beautiful rustic piece of Mexico. These pictures were made on film, you know, wandering the streets. And now, all these years later, I'm wandering the streets of Mexico with uh, uh, a DF, which is, you know, this, as I say, you know, interesting continuum or amalgam of, of the way I shot here and the machinery I shot here and now, of course, the advanced technology of digital. I made a transition from being a film photographer to a digital photographer seamlessly. I shot the first all-digital story for the, for the National Geographic in the history of the magazine. It's the first time they ever did not use a single frame of film. I didn't know much about digital. All I knew was a camera was in my hands. I didn't much care what was going on inside of it, but it felt the same. It felt fast, it felt responsive, and I put my film camera down, I picked up a digital camera, and I, all of a sudden I was a digital photographer. The DF is a, a wonderful and imaginative blend of old and new. When I got it to a pretty stressful situation, I was photographing uh, Mexican charros, who are these uh, competitive cowboys, and I'm in an arena, it's full of dust, there's horses charging all over, and the camera is there in my hands, it's light, it's fast, it's tracking. The horses are charging directly at me, so I got a constantly changing plane of focus. So I was curious about that too, like, okay, is this you know, relatively unobtrusive, light-ish camera going to keep up with me in the field, in the middle of all this dust and mayhem? And it did really well. So that was another you know, moment I was like, okay, this is working. The camera itself has this wonderful homey feel a familiar feel, and it has a kind of look to it that is uh, classic, but it has a lot of the features of a cutting edge digital camera. What makes a great photograph? A photograph that gets your attention. Emotionally, intellectually, pictorially, informationally. If you can make your photograph impart to it a simple fillip of difference that makes somebody just blink twice, then you've done your job as a photographer.